In this lesson we want to extend our current setup with a deformer. For this I open up the deformers here and we will take a squash and stretch deformer. Make it a child of our sphere and take a look at the attributes. If I start to play around with the um, attributes here, the most important one is the factor, which gives us the stretch factor of our object. And something works here, but also a lot of things don't work. You see that it's moving, it's deforming, but the way it deforms is just not right. So we need to fix this. Let's set it back to 100 and take a look at the deformer. So we have this purple line here with uh, the bottom and the top of the deformer and we need to adjust those two values to our object. So let's first of all take the bottom, it's set to minus 100 and you see that if I change it here this line moves and we need to set it to the bottom of our object which is at zero centimeters, so here. And the top value is this one. We need to set it right on top of our sphere, something like this. Um, to get the uh, exact number here, you just need to check your radius, just copy it, go to the deformer, paste it in there and type times two. Then you have the uh, exact number that you need. So you see here the purple line is exactly at the tip of our sphere. If I now play around with the factor value, you see that our sphere is deforming perfectly. Very nice, we can uh, stretch and squash it very much. So this is cool. And now I want to uh, link this factor value to the movement of our sphere. Um, to, do, to do this, first of all, I want to set a few keyframes. So I will set it to 300 frames here. Um, set my project. If you hit uh, Control D, you get your project uh, settings. I go to key interpolation and set it from spline to linear. That I create two linear keyframes by default. And let me first of all create two position keyframes. So I go to frame 0, create a keyframe and go to frame 300, go to X position maybe 1500 and create another keyframe. And if we play this one, we see our nice bouncing ball here. And now let's uh, link the deformer to our ball. To do this, I'll open up Expresso again and bring in my deformer. I create an input port for the value that we want to um, to adjust with Expresso, so it's the factor create an input port, object properties, factor. And as you've seen the factor is in percent and first of all we should check how much we want to deform it so to get the minimum and the maximum amount of this value that we want to have. So first of all let's check the lower amount so when it's touching the floor I want it to be something like this maybe maybe a bit less. 60% and the upper value should be something like this, 140. So it's 60 and 140. So, and of course we need a range mapper. So let's take the range mapper. And let's take a look at this one. So we also need the X position of our sphere because the X position is um, we use the X position to define how much this deformer should uh, uh, be changed, this factor value, because we also use the X position to define how high it should jump. So when it's at its highest point, we want the uh, deformer to, to look like this. And if it's coming down again, we want to deformer, the deformer to look like this. Okay. So we have our in and output range, which is the same. We want the deformation to change uh, over a movement over a movement from 150 centimeters, and our output range should be percent because the factor that we want to change is also in percent. Output range, 
percent. And our lowest output should be 60. And the highest output should be 140. This, uh, those two values are the two values that we defined. We want to be uh, squashed like this and stretched like this. So pretty much very cartoony. So let's do this. Okay, 1640. Okay, and what we also need to do is we need to define a curve for this one here. And the curve should be similar to this one. So it's we have our lowest value when it's touching the floor and the highest value when it's up in the air. So go into the range mapper, create our curve again, like this. And maybe a bit more like this, yeah. And it's very cool that we now have two curves to align our whole animation. So I'm gonna connect those two and let's take a look at them. Not too bad. Oh, something weird is happening here. Okay, and the problem is that we forgot to check uh, modulo, that it's repeating our curve again and again. So check modulo. You. So that's cool. I will uh, set my viewport to Goro shading that we can see it. But you see the timing is not that good and actually the touching of the um, of the floor is just one frame so it's way too fast down here. So we can go to our range mapper for the for the bounce. Just let the animation run and just uh, and yeah, let us just change this curve a little bit. Maybe we want we don't want to stay so long in the air, and we need a little break at the end that it's touching the floor for more than one frame. To do this, I will create something like this. Now it's touching the floor way longer, maybe a little bit less, maybe something like that. And I have the feeling that this um, the deformer uh, should be a little bit like maybe a little time offset. So it's it should um, squash when it already touched the floor. So I will open up this curve here and maybe just slide it a little bit to the right. So this is much better. Now it starts to deform when it's touching the floor. This is basically what we want. Very nice. Of course you can change uh, this curve over and over again. Maybe by creating some more that it's... Uh, oh no, that's not really good. And maybe just a tiny bump in here when he's high in the air. It's not very much, but yeah, this is a little bit of stretching again when he's high in the air and when he starts to fall down again. So you can play around with this curve very much and change the whole look of the animation. Um, let us change one more thing. Maybe you want to create a material and want to change the color of the material um, also with this change of the um, of the squash and stretch deformer. So we create a material, put it on our object, and maybe we want the luminance to be like a red color, and we have the brightness control over our um, over our color here. So we want to address this uh, slider here with Expresso. So open it up and we have our range mapper here with our curve and we can reuse this and just um, maybe just copy it by holding down control on a Mac command and drag this node here, release it, then you have a second one, fit this one in and then we should adjust our uh, output low and output upper. So I want the... Um, I want the ball to be red when he's touching the floor and to be white when he's in the air. So this value here 
Luminance slider should be at 100% when he's down at the floor and at 0% when he's in the air. Open up Expresso, bring in our material, just drag it in there. And create an input port for, uh, where is it, Luminance and the mix strength. Or is it, no, the luminance brightness, sorry. Let's, let me check that. Luminance brightness, of course. And the range mapper, the lowest input must be 100 because we want it to be 100% when he's touching the floor. And the highest, uh, the output upper should be zero because we want it to be 0% when he's high in the air. And that should basically it. So let's try. And as you can see, he's flashing red when he's uh, hitting the floor and he's white when he's in the air. So in this lesson, you learned how you can combine different things with the range mapper, something like deformers or materials and create automatic motions. Um, very easy with uh, the curves in the range mapper. And in the next lesson, we will focus on another example.